October trial dates are now set for the two suspects in the overdose death of TV star Matthew Perry. They're among five people arrested just this week as part of a suspected drug ring accused of providing the ketamine that ultimately killed the actor almost a year ago. Trial attorney and legal analyst Misty Maris is here along with News Nation's Caitlin Becker. Ladies, good morning. Caitlin, I'm going to start with you. Matthew Perry's living assistant is one of those people charged. Can you break down the defendants in this case and their pleas thus far? He actually has pleaded guilty. So you have these five defendants, three of which have pleaded guilty, and they're all kind of part of this alleged conspiracy. So you have to think of it as sort of this top-down conspiracy where you have someone who is providing the drugs, which is the quote-unquote ketamine queen, mm -hmm. that she has entered a plea of not guilty, to sort of a network of people to then distribute it. Now these are all, you know, half of this is alleged, half of this is not, because you've got three guilty pleas here. Eric Fleming there at the end was an acquaintance of Perry's. You have a doctor there. And Kenneth, Kenneth there at the front is guilty plea. That was the live-in assistant who admitted to injecting Matthew Perry on the day he died multiple times with ketamine. He has no medical training. Now you have that doctor right there and then Josephine, who is the quote-unquote ketamine queen. Now they have entered pleas of not guilty. So they're really at the top of this whole conspiracy. Now the doctor allegedly taught Kenneth how to inject Perry with the ketamine. And what you have to understand here is Perry, of course, has a very, very long history of addiction. Sure. He was getting ketamine under doctor's orders. This is something that can be legally prescribed, and That's he was right. doing it to handle his depression. But the way it is worked out in this indictment essentially says that when he wanted more, when the addiction really kind of kicked in, his traditional doctor said, no, this is not, you're getting the therapeutic amount, you're not getting more. And it seemed that the way to circumvent that was to go through this five person alleged conspiracy. So, Misty, there two main defendants. Then there are three others who are facing lesser charges. What could the prosecutors be thinking? What is the strategy here? Well, the strategy is, as Caitlin set forth, every single person in this chain of distribution to Matthew Perry has been charged. So the three individuals who have early plea deals, specifically the assistant and the other doctor who is a part of this distribution chain and actually getting the ketamine to the ketamine queen, Dr. P, and the two individuals who are still facing trial. The idea is to get individuals who have information, enter into early plea deals. Plea deals require cooperation agreements. Cooperation agreements mean that these individuals will provide information to prosecutors that will help tighten up the cases against the masterminds of the scheme, the ketamine queen and Matthew Perry's doctor, Dr. P. So there's a strategy for prosecutors to do that. And in some ways, it's mutually beneficial because in a conspiracy case, every single individual can face the same charges and can face the same ultimate sentence. So we're talking about the sentences for the two remaining defendants, life in prison up to 120 years. So those individuals that pled guilty get leniency, but that's in exchange for providing information and testimony at trial to prosecutors. So that's why you see in many conspiracy cases, plea deals which ultimately provide the information needed to indict the masterminds of a scheme. So Caitlin, how do investigators believe this conspiracy worked? It's really heartbreaking, Hannah, when you read this indictment, and especially knowing how beloved and open Matthew Perry was about his addiction. Yeah. So as I said, he was on it for these th th therapeutic levels under doctor's care. But when it appeared that he was going to go out of that and kind of buy them as street drugs, what you're looking at right here is a text message sent from Dr. P. I wonder how much this moron will pay. Let's find out. They just appear to allegedly prey on his addiction and prey on the fact that he was desperate and had a lot of money. The timetable here is really short. It's just a couple of weeks and a couple of days. They're, they're saying they exchanged something like 50 vials to the tune of $50,000, paying in cash for something like $11,000 for another couple of vials. They were stockpiling, allegedly, again, this is all in the indictment. They were allegedly stockpiling piling vials of this, knowing that his assistant was going to come back and ask for more and more and more and more. It really does break your heart. Talking about text messages, Misty, prosecutors say they have text messages where the defendants colluded after Matthew Perry died. What kind of case is the prosecution going to build out between now and October? 
Well, it's not the crime, it's the cover-up. So we have text messages that are, are showing that there was an effort to cover up the distribution of the ketamine to Matthew Perry. Text messages, they delete everything in relation to him. Uh, and those were done over Signal, which is an app where uh, text messages are immediately deleted, so they're encrypted. And it, it was used for that purpose, to get rid of the evidence. That's another charge they face. But what prosecutors are going to do now is there's going to be a focus on the ketamine queen and Dr. P. And while the legal charges are the same, uh, conspiracy to distribute ketamine ultimately resulting in death, the theories are a bit different between the two. But it looks like what prosecutors want to do, according to the U.S. attorney, is actually consolidate those two cases, meaning one trial, two defendants. And that would be beneficial to prosecutors because when you look at this in total, meaning you look at this scheme from soup to nuts, from the ketamine queen to the distribution to Matthew Perry, it is much more clear to a jury what was going on. And that's why you want to see, uh, prosecutors want to see this tried as one case. So all of those efforts are going to be utilizing the witnesses who have already pled guilty in conjunction with these text messages in order to establish the critical elements of intent and that there was an awareness on behalf of these two defendants that Matthew Perry could die. Now that's pretty easy for the doctor. What a breach of trust between doctor and patient, understanding his addiction. A bit different from the ketamine queen, right. but there's evidence in the indictment that she had actually sold ketamine to another individual shortly before who had died. So all of that is going to be part of the case when this goes to trial. Dr. Drew joined Cuomo last night. He compared Matthew Perry's death to another very famous, tragic celebrity overdose involving a doctor. This is essentially identical to the Michael Jackson situation. The fact that Michael Jackson was given propofol outside of a surgical suite or an intensive mm -hmm. care unit was the most bizarre thing I'd ever heard. I had a similar reaction to what was going on with this ketamine that was being distributed to poor Matthew Carey. Even though, however, I don't believe the ketamine was the proximate cause of his death. So, Caitlin, talk about these other similar cases in Hollywood. I was with Dr. Drew there when I heard about this. The first thing I thought about was the Michael Jackson propofol overdose. And you saw Harvey Levin was in that as well. I worked at TMZ at the time with Harvey when this was all coming down. It was the first thing that I thought of. But this is not the only time we have seen law enforcement go after drug dealers in, of course, the Conrad Murray case. And in part of this case, you're talking about medical professionals. But in Mac Miller's overdose, in the overdose of Michael Kenneth Williams, the actor from The Wire, both in both of those instances, prosecutors were able to successfully prosecute the drug dealers who sold them in both instances there fentanyl laced heroin and oxy pills. Caitlin Becker, thank you so much. Misty Maris, we'll see you shortly in our next hour to discuss a wrongful death lawsuit against Disney. Thank you again.